What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday and hope everyone had like a beautiful Thanksgiving, able to spend time with friends and family and so forth and was safe. Okay, so that was like the main thing to be safe. So I had a great time, you know, it was just me and my family, ate and then I fell asleep and that was just about it. But, um, other than that, everything is good. Um, the same wig that I have on in my last week's video, which is the Free Trust Equal, and it is Clary. $17, you guys, girls, $17 on sisterwigs.com. It's not that really, like, silky synthetic. It's not silky. It more it resembles, like, African-American relaxed texture. So, I absolutely love it. Of course, it is an invisible part, but, ladies, I made it visible so that you can see it. Yes. Yes. And other than that, I have a new tattoo, which I am super excited to show you guys. I got this done yesterday, which was Monday because today's Tuesday. So by the time this goes up, it's Wednesday because I like to make sure that it's out one time. But I got it done Monday and it was from 12 noon to like almost 8 o'clock. So over seven and a half hours, I sat in the chair and got a cover up. So the tattoo that I got rid of or the two tattoos that I got rid of was the actual portrait of my husband. And it was the ribbon band that said, I heart John. So I got rid of that. And after seven and a half hours, I still have more to go. Um, my arm got super swollen, so I didn't get to finish it all. But for so far, it's really pretty. And of course, it's really sore looking right now. So this is basically koi fish. And this is the side that I didn't get to get colored in. But this is all drawn up. It's not like one of those you pick out of a book. I don't really do those. Um, but yeah, so... The back of it will have an octopus and like some other sea creatures and then the rest of it up here will be probably still blended into this. So yeah, I wasn't going to do this arm as a sleeve, but now that it's half of a sleeve, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do two sleeves. So I will be getting that finished in the next few weeks and then I'll just keep adding on to it. I love the place Ohm Inc. OM Inc. Um... They're really, really awesome. They do their own artwork. They have a painting gallery. Really feng shui, warm area. It's just really pretty in there. So relaxing. And the people there are, like, so awesome. Like, so that was my first tattoo ever up here in Arizona. So, yes, I got me a West Coast tattoo, y'all. Mm. And, of course, got me a drink. I'm going to tell you guys this. This is the same drink that I always make. It's the pineapple upside down cake with the Smirnoff cake vodka and pineapple juice and some grenadine cherry syrup. Um, I do sometimes use Bacardi rum, the pineapple version, but I am like a one hit pony, one trick pony. Like I don't really know how to make drinks. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a bartender, though I do have the recipes for drinks. I'm really not that great at them. So this is the one that I think I'm the greatest at. It could get me nice if I kept sipping, but... I know my limits. So, yes, and you got to have a drink when you're doing real talk. So, mm-hmm. Yep. So, as always, if you want a real talk situation done about yourself, you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And as always, if you want to change the name of yourself or your characters in the video, the email, to me go ahead and mention that so that way I don't have to sit and think of a name because I bet you if you don't your name would be Clary like this wig the next go round so mm -hmm. so you guys let's get into the real talk I'm gonna try to do three today um, because I do have some other things I gotta do which is custom wigs so if you want a custom wig made you can always send me an email or check my website out below as well as there are video units which are units that I reviewed for like 15 minutes um they're virgin hair so you know I make so many I only have one head I can't wear all those wigs and also I do um from time to time do lots like you can get like four or five synthetic wigs in a lot um and I put the pictures and stuff, and they were only done for video reviews, and those are like $50 with the shipping included, so you get like 5 for 50 bucks. You can't beat that. And they're, to me, they're still brand new because they were worn like 10 minutes, so, you know, it is what it is. Except for Clary, she will be staying in my collection because I really, really, really do like her. And the color of her is OP430, which is probably not showing up that great, but ladies, I will post the information to the video below. It is a bomb-ass wig. Seriously, bomb-ass wig. So, yeah, let's get into real talk. Oh 
Okay, so this one is really good. Not the drink, the email. They're all really good, but I wanted to do this one first. Okay. Hello, April. Or oh, hey, April. I have a situation that I need advice on. Just call me Sydney for the sake of this letter. Excuse me. I'm 33 years old in case you want to know. So during the summer, I hit a rough patch and was struggling financially. I often asked my child's father for money for groceries for myself and my child. He didn't complain or mind giving me money for groceries. Meanwhile, I had a boyfriend. My boyfriend and I are two years apart in age. My boyfriend would come over and help himself to anything in my refrigerator. And I didn't mind because we were supposed to be together. But one day when I was a little low on groceries, he went to the Cheesecake Factory and bought himself $60 worth of food. He didn't bring myself or my son anything back to the house to eat. He had the nerve to sit in front of me and tell me, yeah, I bought food for tonight, tomorrow's lunch, and dinner. This really pissed me off, considering that earlier that day I was in the kitchen, inventing something to eat for my son and I to eat. The thing that got me was that he didn't buy himself anything to drink. So he came back and drank the juice that I brought my child's father's money with. I didn't say anything and decided to just let it go because I didn't feel like arguing. I'm a non-confrontational person, but will go from 0 to 100 real quick if someone tries me, though. My son noticed that I was a little upset. He's 12. So we went down to the kitchen and took three big bites out of his red velvet cake. My so-called boyfriend was like, your son ate my cake. In my mind, I'm like, good, and proceeded to pretend to chastise him for him, for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, she said, in my mind, I'm like, good, and I proceeded to pretend to chastise my son for it. Then a week later, he texted me saying that he wanted to buy a bunch of income properties and that he was going to look at houses. So I asked him, what realtor is showing you these houses? He says, I don't know, some jabroni I found online. So this let me know that this wasn't anyone that he knew personally. This really pissed me off. It pissed me off because I'm a realtor and he'd rather put money in another man's pocket when he saw me struggle financially over the summer. April, I had to pull back from this man. He says that I have an attitude and it's ugly. I don't understand why he wouldn't want to help me to try to get out of my situation. It's not like I asked him to support me in any way. Why would he think it's cool to send me photos of houses that he wants to buy and not seek my services as a realtor? This really hurt my feelings. It made me feel like I'm not good enough to be his realtor. I haven't told him why I fell back so hard, but he has such an... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I had lost my place. I haven't told him why I fell back so hard, but he has such an attitude that he would tell me that my reasons aren't important. So I'm just waiting to get my camera back from him, and then I plan to block his number for good. Do you think that I'm being petty for not wanting to deal with him for this? I feel like he is out for himself. When you're with someone, you're supposed to build each other up. I've listened to him talk about himself 24-7 since we've met. And I say anything, excuse me, when I say anything about myself, he tells me that why, he tells me that what I'm saying is important as, as what he's saying, but turns around and claims to love me. Like, am I expecting too much? Wow. So basically, Sydney has been struggling financially. She has a 12-year-old son. She's 33. She's been struggling financially for the summer, through the summer. So she's been asking her son's father for money for bills and groceries, and he's been happy to help out. He hasn't made any complaints. However, Sydney has a boyfriend. We're just going to call him John. My ex's name. We're just going to call him John, who they are two years apart. However, John will come over and eat her food. She doesn't have any problem with it because they're together. They're supposed to be building one another up. But he does know that she's struggling financially, so times are hard. So John goes out to the cake factory, Cheesecake Factory, and buys himself $60 worth of food, brings it back to her house, and says it's dinner for tonight and lunch for tomorrow. And didn't bring anybody else anything to eat and sat in front of everybody else's face and ate his food. However, he didn't buy himself no damn soda to go along with that. So what did he do in return? He went in Sydney's refrigerator and drank up her son's juice. Now, later on that day, Sydney and her son went downstairs because they were hungry and took a couple of bites out of John's cheese. Um, not, excuse me, cheese. Red velvet cake. He threw a fit about it. And then, now here's another turn for all about it. He's looking to buy properties, and Sydney's a realtor, so he's just going to go with just any jabroni on the internet and give them his money instead of going through his girlfriend, who's also a realtor. And also chastises her, saying that what she has to say isn't important, but loves her. So she wants to know, is she being petty for pulling back from him? 
let me tell you something. First of all, that fucking selfish shit. Okay, because that shit just got people pissed the fuck off. That selfish shit. How you gonna come up in somebody else's fucking house and eat their food, and then you gonna come to somebody else's house and bring your own shit and not have no shit for nobody else or even offer somebody else some shit to, to eat out of what you got? You don't do shit like that. That's like with my kids. When my son, my oldest, when I'm my oldest, but my second oldest son, he's 17, he would go, he would be with his friends, or I would come home and I would bring, you know, food for everybody if it was takeout. You know, everybody would have their own container and everybody would have their own shit. I would bring Wuzzle his stuff and it would, I would leave it there because he would normally be out with his friends and that's what we call him. We call him Wuzzle, but his name is Jalen. And he's been called Wuzzle since he's been a kid, a baby. So, Wuzzle would come in and he would see that his food was there, his container, and he would leave with it. And I said, where are you going with that? I'm going to go to my friend Mitch's house or I'm going to go to such and such house. And I would always tell him, you can't bring food to somebody else's house. That's rude. You don't do stuff like that. If you're going to bring your food over there, you better make sure that you're offering it and you're sharing it. And if you're not, then you need to leave it here. He was fine with what I said. He always made sure, and I always made sure to give each and one of my kids more than enough for seconds, thirds, whatever, or take to school with you. He made sure, and always make sure, if he's bringing some of his own food and he has enough, that he's going to share it with his friends. If he doesn't have enough, he don't bother bringing it. He'll eat it at home and then leave. And this is the shit I'm talking about. If you was to come to my motherfucking house, sit down on my couch, even if I had a full refrigerator and cabinets full of um, food, which I always do, but don't come to my motherfucking house and think you're going to sit on my goddamn couch and eat your shit and not come up in here and offer me none or bring me none. That's like you came over to visit. You got Burger King for you and you ain't bring me or my kids none bitch stay your ass at motherfucking burger king and eat that shit don't come to nobody house with no food and don't have nothing for them that is common courtesy manners did john's mother ever teach him some motherfucking manners please petty is not even what you're being Shh. You being real cool, because let me tell you something. I would tell that damn sorry-ass bastard, bring me my fucking camera, because if you don't, I'm going to put a police report on your ass for stolen goods. And second of all, it's over. There's no coming back. This That's just petty and selfishness. And if you can sit there and do that in front of a child and its mother, and you know they're on hard times, then you all about self. You all about yourself. You constantly sitting there talking about what you want to do, what you're going to do, and then you're going to tell the next person... What they got to say ain't important. This is what I would say. Nigga, you ain't important. You ain't even relevant. Take your shit, pack your bags, or whatever the fuck you got here. And if you ain't staying here, put your coat on and your shoes and hit the road. You ain't about to come up in my shit. I don't even give a fuck if we ain't in my shit. I don't give a damn where we at. You ain't about to tell me what the fuck I got to say ain't important. Because if you don't think what I'm about to say is important, then you're about to get a whole mouthful of some real important shit that you're going to really sit back and your eyes going to pop out the fucking head of your face and you're going to realize, God damn, the bitch got a mouth on her and what she's saying right now is real important. I'm just saying, people are so selfish and self-centered and it's sad and it's a shame. And he's the type of person that, girl, please don't even waste your time. I wouldn't give a damn if he was two months apart from you in age. That's selfishness. And obviously, he ain't thinking about nobody but for self. And for you to be a realtor and struggling, because times do get hard for realtors. They ain't always raking in the dough. They got to get, sometimes it's like they got to get lucky to sell a house. It takes a whole lot of time, work, and effort. Trust me, I used to work for a realtor company. Never was a realtor. But I would see the things that was done, the appraisals, and the houses that weren't sold, and how those people would act. I was just an accountant and an administrator. So... My role was not as a realtor, so I got a paycheck every week. However, I see what they go through, and they sometimes get lucky, and sometimes they don't. It's a hit or miss. It's just like sometimes, somewhat like a car salesman, but a car salesman gets a lot better luck than a house, a home realtor. Home realtors have a lot of work to do. And for him to not want to use you, that's bullshit. And however this, Sydney, let me say this to you after I sip on this. You wouldn't have wanted him to use you as a realtor and use your services. You know why? Because as selfish as he is, he went to Cheesecake Factory and purchased $60 worth of food for himself, not bringing you and your son back anything to eat. What makes you think for just a little bit, a little bit, that he want to pay you for your services? Now, if he was to come to you and ask you for your realtor services to help him get a house or some property or whatever, 
Bitch, he ain't about to pay you. He ain't paying you no mind as it is. He thinks what you have to say is not important. He ain't really paying you much attention. He damn sure ain't paying your bills. He come in your house and eat your shit up. Use your gas, electricity, water, cable, phone, whatever, internet, Wi-Fi, okay? Because this is what the motherfucker do. Because as soon as he enters your house, he's using all of these things, okay? Whether or not he turns on a light, he washes his motherfucking hand. That's your water bill. I don't care if it is 10 seconds of washing his goddamn hands. He's using up your goddamn water. He's using up your air, your oxygen, your space. Tell him to sit his dirty ass outside some fucking way. So if he's doing all of this and he ain't paying you no bit of attention and also telling you what you got to say ain't important, what makes you think that this nigga gonna wanna pay you for your services? If you was to offer him your services, do you really think that he's gonna wanna give you any money? No, he's gonna think that you're offering it out the kindness of your heart. And that's what girlfriends do. That's what he's gonna think. But I'll tell that motherfucker just like that. Nigga, please, um, you gonna pay just like everybody the fuck else. But let him go find his realtor properties, because you know what's gonna happen? People like him that are so selfish and self-absorbed and just self-centered and self-into themselves, they never gonna really amount to much. They will amount to some shit, but those people are miserable, and a lot of people out here in the real world, like myself, you, and others that are watching, are gonna see them for what they really are. So let him go ahead and put that noose around his neck and strangle himself slowly. Die motherfucking slow, okay? You're not being petty. You'd be stupid if you continue to sleep with him or see him. However, I would fucking get my camera back. No holes bars. You ain't got to wait to get your shit back. Why he ain't got his own motherfucking camera? Since he's such big willy status buying fucking properties. Nigga, go get your own shit. You got a phone? Take some pictures with that shit. But give me my shit back and get to stepping. I'm just saying, get to fucking stepping. It's not being petty. You never come in nobody's house with food if you ain't got nothing for nobody else. That's like me. If I go out to eat, you know, I don't take all my kids out to eat with me sometimes because they're in school. You know what I mean? So when me and my daughter Tatiana get together on her days off and we got my grandson and it's just me and her, we don't even tell them that we went out to eat because I feel some type of way like, damn. I didn't bring them, though they were in school. I don't want them to know that I went out to eat. So it's like a secret. Or, you know what I'm saying? And whenever I take any of the kids, I'll be like, don't say nothing. Don't say we went out to eat because they're going to be like, where's ours? So I don't do shit like that. But if I'm coming back with some takeout, some fast food, you best believe I'm not coming back in my house with just something for me or me and Mumsy. I'm coming back with shit for every fucking body. You know what I'm saying? And my daughter, my oldest daughter, Tati, she don't even live here. However, if she knows, like, you know what I'm saying, that I'm going to one of her favorite places to get some takeout, some fast food, you best believe I'm stopping over her house and like, here, I got this for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go home and give the kids they shit. But this for you. That's the shit that I fucking do. Even though I'm not sitting in her house eating her food or eating in front of her, this the, that's the shit that I do because that's my family and that's what real motherfuckers do. I would never in my life come to anybody's house with anything to eat and just sit there. I wouldn't even feel right as a fucking person. You know what I'm saying? I would not feel right as a person. And if I do have leftovers, just sitting in the restaurant and coming back, like I went out to Red Lobster's with my girlfriends up here and I've got, you know, you look at the menu and I like to eat, especially if I'm high. I like to fucking eat. So I order a bunch of shit. My eyes are bigger than my stomach and I have a bunch of shit that I didn't even finish. You know what? I make sure that I got enough shit to bring home to my three kids that live with me now so that they could divvy it up. Because if I don't, then the shit is going to stay or April's about to stuff her face so that she can't eat no more. But I'm not about to bring shit home and nobody else get no shit. That's just selfishness. I, I don't, you know, that's happened to me a couple of times with my ex-husband. He's done shit like that. Like, oh, well, you didn't cook dinner, so I'm going to get something to eat. Nigga, if you know I didn't cook dinner, what the fuck make you think that we ate? We eating like whatever. A bowl of cereal because I just didn't have the time to cook or whatever. So you're going to go and get some shit because he's done that shit before. And you're going to come back up in here with no shit for none of your kids or no shit like that. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? People like that are petty. That's petty, Sydney. That's what you call real petty and selfishness. So don't fucking bother with him. Get your shit the fuck back. Because shit like that right there pisses me off. Like, you ain't about to sit up in my house. And you damn sure ain't about to sit up in my kid's face and eat. Not today. Mm -mm. So, yes. Let Sydney know what you guys think about her situation. Okay, so. Dog started barking. My son started yelling at the dog. I thought I had a package or something. 
So <laughs> this is the next one. How to help my mom from my own dad is what she calls it. How to help my mom from my own dad. Her biological parents. Hi April, let's call me Kathy. My parents have been married for over 40 years and including myself, they have three daughters. I am the youngest and am now 31 years old. All my life, on and off, my father has been physically, verbally, and emotionally abusive to my mother. My sisters and I all have terrible, horrible memories and have all had emotional distress and nightmares due to his behavior. Now that we are all adults, we are super tight and feel very protective over our mother. We have come to terms that this relationship is very toxic and has had a bad and has and as bad as my father has been to our mother, no matter how much we plead, cry and fuss with her, she will always stay. We all have confronted our father several times and he has always blamed our mother for all of his abuse behavior. However, last year he admitted to having a drug problem when we were kids and stated that he barely remembers abusing her so badly. My mother added that he did have a drug problem and went to rehab once when they were very young. Now that they are both in their 60s, you would think that things would have calmed down between them. But no, things have recently gotten even worse. A couple of months ago, my mother found hotel charges on his bank account statements and saw he had been doing this off and on for the past two years. She confronted him and he said that the bank was making mistakes. She also hacked into his phone records and called unfamiliar numbers and spoke to a woman who he said she met him online and that they had been talking. The woman says she felt that he wanted to take it further, but she cut him off because he was married. With all this proof being put in his face, my father continued to lie and say he was not cheating. My mother became some sort of private detective and was checking his every move. So when he was supposed to be at work, she saw that he had made hotel reservations. So she left work and drove to the hotel and saw his car parked. She went looking for him and even checked at the front desk, but they refused to give him refused to give her his room number. However, they did call the room and tell him his wife was at the front desk and he hung up on them. That night, he admitted to having an affair for two years. However, the very next day, he told my mother that he was not cheating on her, but was smoking weed again, laced with PCP, and he goes to hotels to get high. She didn't believe him, so she showed, so he showed her the drugs. In one breath, in one breath, he says she, he needed help, and in the next, he said the drugs were helping him to lose weight and made him think better. My father t later told her that he didn't have a drug problem, but he was selling the drugs. At this point, we don't know what to believe, but my sisters and I all have cut him off. Between the three of us, we have husbands, careers, and three babies, all under the age of three. And we do not want to associate with a drug dealer, user, or abuser, even if this is our own father. Our mother, on the other hand, is dragging her feet to leave or file for a divorce and is constantly making excuses as to why she has to take her time with ending her marriage. It's very frustrating to see your own mother in this position. We feel like those helpless little girls watching her be abused all over again. How can we help our mom? Wow, Kathy. So Kathy's mom and dad have been married for 20 years and now they're in their 60s. Shut up, Coco! Sorry. So Kathy's mom and dad have been married for six for 40 years, for over 40 years. And they're in their 60s now. And he's verbally, physically, emotionally abusive to her. He has been cheating on her, but it denies cheating on her. Has a drug problem. Um, Kathy's mom has caught him at the hotel. The hotel front desk has called his room and let him know his wife was downstairs. And he hung up on her. And now he's trying to say that he wasn't there cheating. He was there smoking weed laced with PCP. And that the weed helps him think better and helps him lose weight. And now he's not using the drugs. He's selling the drugs. And what should they do? Sounds like he's a big fucking liar to me. A big ass fucking liar. It's like one lie after another lie after another lie after another lie. Get your shit together. You are 60 years the fuck old. Why would you be selling drugs? I mean, really? I mean, like, really? I'm 41. I'm not about to sell no weed or no drugs. I would look like a flunky. At 60 years old, your ass needs to either be just about to retire or taking your old motherfucking ass to work and coming home to your wife and being pleasant. We understand that in marriage and early on in a relationship, when we young, shit happens. Somebody may cheat and we go through our shit. But when we are in our 60s, there is no need to be acting like we are in our 20s still. So the problem with Kathy's father is... 
He just ain't never grow up, nor does he ever want to grow up. And who are you to be cheating on somebody at 60 years the fuck old with your old ass? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You got this woman who's been with you for f over 40 years and you still want to mess around with her? I'm sorry, Kathy. However, you and your sisters, the only thing that I could tell you is you could tell somebody something until you're blue in the face. You could like, that's like you telling me, April, leave your ex-husband, leave your ex-husband, leave your ex-husband, leave your ex-husband, leave your ex-husband. You could keep telling me that until you blew in the face. I am not going to leave until I'm ready to leave. You know what I'm saying? I listen to what you have to say. I will take your advice into consideration. And I might just sit there and agree with you and tell you, y'all, girl, I'm tired of him. Because trust me, I've done this already with my bestie, Love Kisses 99. And when I say done this, she knew all the bullshit that I was going through with my ex-husband. She would hear me cuss his ass out so bad over the phone. When I would be on the phone with her talking, he would ask me some dumb ass questions or do some dumb shit. And I would cuss him out with the quickness. Zero to a hundred real quick like Drake says cuss him out and then I write back down to zero like okay girl what's up she was like god damn you just went off on this fool and then she would laugh about it because I would just like rah it would be like some raw possession shit and then I would be just like okay girl what's up because this is and this is how I feel I would call her bitching to her about how he is he's a drunk he's an alcoholic and she would always listen to me and she would, she would be neutral though. You know what I'm saying? She would listen to me and she would give me advice. But she would more or less listen to me. Which is the best thing that anybody could do for you sometimes. Sometimes when you tell somebody, girl, I would leave his ass the fuck alone. He ain't shit. Fuck him. You would you so stupid for staying with his ass. Sometimes when you tell people shit like that, it doesn't hit them upside the head. The only thing that's going to hit them upside the head is the person that they're dealing with. And then they finally wake up. And that's what happened to me, unfortunately. I spent over 16, almost 17 years in that marriage with him. And trust and believe when I tell you that it was not like that in the beginning. It was really, really well. But then... You know, you get his mother and his sisters meddling and I got to fight them physically. Me and my mom, me and my own mother have to fight his mother and sister fist fight because they come into my doors 8 o'clock in the morning because they son got arrested for selling drugs. You want to pop off at like 8.30, 8.15 in the morning to the wrong bitch, okay? And you don't even know this bitch got her mother inside who's like fucking 10 times crazier than me. Okay? So, we got to pop off. Like, literally pop the fuck off. Okay? At 8 some in the morning. Okay? Me and my mama, two little light skins against these women. Like, really? On my fucking property. Popping the fuck off. Then you're going to get mad because we popped off on you. You got hit upside the head a couple times. I'm going to go call the police. Who does that? But anyway, I've had my shit and my fair share of misery. And misery love company sometimes. And I had to finally realize when it got drastic to leave him the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need nobody to tell me because he let me know himself on January 5th, 2013 when his ass came home fucking drunk as hell. And I used to work from home for Amazon and Walgreens. I had my little space in there on the phone. I'm about to tell y'all the story. In there on the phone with customer service because I'm customer service. And I hear my daughter Tati. She's in the kitchen. Which is right there on the opposite side of that door. She's making dinner. And I hear him. Because he's drunk off of Hennessy. Running his motherfucking mouth to her. Came in starting with her. Talking about her father ain't shit. All this shit. I got to come out and put the calls on hold. So I don't get any calls. And serve him up a dish of fucking disrespect. And you better watch what the fuck you got to say. Then he leaves, and I, he leaves through the back door, and I hear him walking. Now, mind you, it's freezing cold. It's snow all in my driveway. He takes my mumsy outside with no coat on at all and was talking to her in the driveway, talking shit. I got to go outside and get her because my daughter is like, Mommy, he just took mumsy outside. And then when I go get her, I'm like, Mumsy, come inside, please. Come inside. And I'm really trying to ignore him because I know how I get and if with you running off at the mouth with me while you drunk and I know how I get, nigga, you be dead in the snow. So it's my best bet to leave you the fuck alone. It didn't end like that. You know what I'm saying? What he did to me was I got Mumsy. He was like, you fucking bitch. Get out, you fucking bitch. I was like, get out. Get out of what? This is my fucking house. You just reside here and you sleep on the motherfucking couch. Left it at that. He kept talking shit. My oldest, oldest son, 
came downstairs and got in his face and was like, yo, you need to chill out. What? I didn't do anything. I don't know why your mother's acting like this. I'm like, you know, my son, I thought my son calmed everything down. Okay. So, like 20 minutes later, my son leaves. He gets in his own car and he leaves. Go hang out with his friends. Here comes John, my ex-husband, running off of his fucking mouth. And at this point in time, I'm done. Because you done stole from me, I noticed. And at the time, you know what I'm saying, I was still smoking. I had quit and then I started smoking again. I had a brand new fucking pack of cigarettes. Brand new pack. They weren't even open yet. I went to get me one. And all I seen was a little piece that you tear off from the, the strip. From the, I'm like, where's my cigarettes? Ain't nobody smokes in my house but me and him. I'm like, where's my cigarettes at? I don't need to steal your cigarettes. I got money. I got money. He starts taking out shit papers out of his pocket. Okay, so when I say papers, it ain't fucking green paper like like dollar bills. It's fucking loosely paper posted. No, I got money. You see this? You see this? This is how drunk he is. Throwing a fucking paper at me. All in my face. Like, and he's talking shit. And I'm standing there like, yo... Still kept talking shit, talking shit. I'm like, you stole money from my, my account? I ain't got to steal nothing from you. I was like, yo, back the fuck up out of my face, for real. I remember exactly. He didn't, so what I did was I took him and I shoved the shit out of him. And when I shoved him, he went flying across the dining room floor and landed on a toy box, my daughter's toy chest, and fell in it. Then he got up and we was going at it. When I say we was going at it, that nigga fought me like I was a nigga on the street. Okay? Punching me in my fucking head. But I ain't about to go down like that. So what happened then? And it's fucked up that my my daughter Tati had to get involved with it. Because she ain't about to let me go down like that. We had to fuck that nigga up in my house. Like seriously. It got so bad that my, my daughter Nay... Ran next door in the snow with no shoes on to get the neighbor, the neighbor to call the cops because she couldn't use the house phone because it was still hooked up to my work. And once I hook it up to my work, you can't use it. You get no dial tone. I can only receive calls from my job. We still in there rumbling. We fighting him. I had to hit him upside the head because he trying to um, punch my daughter. By the end of the fight, the police came and dragged him out. He tried to steal my three laptops. He had them in the big army bags. And the police found them on my front porch. My cable box, my PS3s, there were two of those, my three laptops, all the jewelry that I used to make. He was stealing my shit and then tried to say that he didn't do anything. Long story short, my neighbor, which we were really best friends at the time, we still are cool. She came over before the cops got there and got in his face like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get the fuck out of here. He tried to attack her. By the time the cops came, the ambulance had to come too because I was bleeding and I didn't know. This motherfucker okay bit me this is not the walking dead so i have a permanent scar on my back um it looks like i got shot um but that right there is a bite mark from my ex-husband so i didn't need anybody to tell me to leave him the fuck alone sometimes it takes a lot for a person to go through and then they realize their breaking point and I never had to have a fight with him like that it was normally verbally but he got so drunk that he felt like he was Hercules and this is my house and this is my dwelling and these are my kids and you ain't about to come up in here and take over shit okay I tased your motherfucking ass several times you didn't go down I had to hit him upside the head with a metal candle thing to knock him the fuck out. Like, you know what I'm saying? There have been times when I have busted him upside his head because he get drunk and he want to run his mouth. And I don't have patience for that. He's never put his hands on me. But that time, this nigga bit me. And after that, he couldn't even come near me anymore. He got arrested. He had to do 22 months in federal federal penitentiary because he was still on federal probation. And, yeah, he's trying to get back with me. I tried to overlook that shit, but I felt so stupid even trying to overlook that shit. I moved all the way to this side of the world to get the fuck away from him. You know what I'm saying? So, unfortunately, Kathy, I had to go into this. But it don't matter if you if you tell somebody something. You could be blue in the face. And tell them all day long. They are not going to be ready until they're ready. It don't matter what you and your three sisters want. Unfortunately for her. 
it's unfortunate, but she's not going to leave until she's ready to leave. And the breaking point is not there for her. And what the best thing for you to do is you guys can still keep talking to her, but don't chastise her. But morally support her and try to get her help. Maybe some, some literature that can help her or some something that you guys can take her out and do with her and just talk to her. But don't gang up on her because it's not going to help the situation any better. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's unfortunate that he is 60 years old and wants to cheat on her. Like, who does that? You're 60 years old, man. You should be realizing that. You're 60. You are... More than half a century or a decade or more than half a century old now. 60 years old. At 60 years old. Really? Like, come on, you guys have three children. Get grandkids and children in laws. In laws. You know what I'm saying? Son in laws and shit. And you acting a fool. And I bet you this much. Your father would not like it if y'all husbands was treating you like that. He got a drug problem. Yeah, your father got a drug problem. And at 60 years old, he should be ashamed of himself to be having no damn drug problem. Okay, it's one thing to smoke weed. My dad is 65, okay? And he is fine as hell at 65, but he got himself a wife, marriage number four, but he finally made and found the right one. And like I said about my dad before, he is an international man, meaning my mom was the first only black woman that he ever married, okay? And you know, my dad is not fully black. Um, and then he's got my, my his second wife, who is a native Indian. Then he has his third wife, who is a Caucasian woman. And then he has his fourth wife, which is a Philippine woman. And I love her to death. Like, that's my bitch. I mean, and I don't mean to say it like that. She ain't gonna watch this anyway. But I love Norma to death. But he is 65 years old, okay? And he is calm. And all my dad does, he's retired. He sits at home. He owns his own house. And he has an income property upstairs because it's a two-story, um, two-family home. He has his little income property. He gets his little bit SSI check every month because, you know, he old shit now. He get his retirement. He smoke his weed. You know what I'm saying? Yes, my dad smoke weed. He grow his own shit, okay? He grows his own shit, so, mm, okay? And trust me, my dad is official. Um, but he ain't worried about cheating on nobody. He loved the hell out of his woman, and, and I'm happy for him that he could finally settle down at 65. I mean, he's been settled down with Norma, but when you come to a certain age, like now, I'm 41 years old. I'm not saying I want to cheat, but I'll tell you what, though. If this motherfucker that I'm with want to act up, you best believe I ain't going to cheat on him. His ass going to get kicked to the motherfucking curb. Just like that. Because I don't have tolerance for the bullshit. You ain't about to drag me the fuck down. And you damn sure ain't about to drag my kids down. And you ain't gonna take me out of my motherfucking feng shui and character. Not today, not tomorrow, not on no given Sunday. And best believe that. So at a certain age and time, you need to chill the fuck out. Because your ass is fucking old. Grow the fuck up. So he ain't got nothing but a drug. He got a drug problem. Your father got a drug problem. He got a lying problem and a cheating problem. And your mom, she might be setting her ways because they both 60 and she might feel, she may feel like, you know what? I've been with him this long. Who's going to want me now? Or what am I to do now? You ain't got to be with nobody. Nobody wants to grow old alone, but sometimes we need some time in our life where we got to woosah and say fuck everybody and fuck a relationship. And that's what I had to do when I left my husband, my ex-husband. And it felt so good. So, Kathy, unfortunately, your mom has already made it clear to you that she's not going to leave until she's ready to get out of her marriage. So the most that you can do, you and your sisters can do to help her is to get her literature, find her things to do to, um, you know, occupy her time. That way she can realize this is what real love and a real relationship is like. Invite her over to your homes without your father involved and let her see how you and your loved ones perform and act amongst each other. And then she can realize without you saying a fucking word, she can see that shit for herself. But until then, she is not going to leave that man until she's ready. And that is the truth about anyone. And that'll tell you that in domestic violence classes, because I've taken a... They are not going to leave until they are ready to leave, unfortunately. So, on that note, that's my daughter calling. She must have known I was talking about her. 
let Kathy know what you think. Unfortunately, I was not able to do two videos because these were pretty long. But I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. And as always, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you check out this wig video. Oh my God, I freaking fucking love it. It's beautiful. It really is a great synthetic wig. Mm -hmm. And of course, I will come back when my tattoo is done. It hurts so bad. Like, my arm is so sore. But this is my daughter. So, you know what? Stay deep and devolicious. And I'll speak to you guys real soon.